Another rainy day in LA, and it's making me feel some type of way. Alexa, what's the weather today? Currently, in Los Angeles, it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit with rain. Today, you can expect thunderstorms, with a high of 61 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. Also, there's an aerial flood advisory in effect. I love how when I first moved to LA, I used to say, it never rains here. I miss the rain so much. I miss weather. And now it feels like it rains all the freaking time. Does anyone else feel that Los Angeles, for being such a big city, can feel so lonely? Let's talk about it. The beauty of a rainy day is that it can feel so cozy and makes you think some deep thoughts. But it can also bring your mood down a bit and give you the blues. And that's how I'm feeling right now as I spent the day working remotely and running some errands in my car in the rain and realizing there's not much sense of community here in LA. But I feel like first, we need to talk about America in general. The United States is, let's be real, kind of a lonely place when you think about it. Because the country was essentially built with the automobile in mind, the American dream transformed into a white picket fence house with a two-car garage. And because of that, lacks the spontaneity of the day and human connections. In fact, the US Surgeon General reported that the loneliness epidemic in America is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes per day in the sense that it's leading to premature deaths. Add in the modern times of us being addicted to our phones, it feels like we're not even living in the real world anymore. And so many people we see throughout the day are online. Case A, you're watching me talk and we're not having a two-way conversation. It's a little weird when you think about it. I should preface by saying that I really like Los Angeles and I want to be here. Before all the natives come with pitchforks and angrily demand that my transplant self leaves and goes back to wherever I came from. Well, you know what? I don't want to yet. I love the opportunity here, the California adventures, the creative landscape the city helps paint for you, and the amenities and overall things to do. But after formally living in New York City, I feel like I took that city for granted a little bit. And why do people move to Los Angeles? Well, typically, and probably stereotypically, to pursue something creative. As an entertainment mecca, it's a great launching pad for a career in entertainment, whether it be acting or production or screenwriting or animation, anything. It's an industry less focused on the nine to five formula and more a gig-based economy. Now, of course, there are millions of people not in the industry, like myself, who are working nine to fives and something else. I feel like even years later, I'm finding myself being a homebody more. Maybe it's the winter, I don't know, but I'm finding, let's say, the hikes I used to do regularly are feeling a little more boring now. I mean, let's say you're hiking in LA, usually there's not a lot of people even around, unless it's Runyon Canyon. It's like, how is a county of almost 10 million people so isolated in our cars and apartments? And what's interesting about this topic is that I'm not lonely in the sense that I have no friends in LA. I have a great circle here, but even when you have friends and connections, something still feels a little off. So while it's not totally fair to compare these two cities, I understand, let's take it back to New York City for a moment and why it's so sought after and people love it so much, albeit all of its flaws and struggles of actually surviving there. The more cynical haters will say New York is nothing but a dirty, expensive cesspool run by terrible politicians. And I'm not saying New York is a perfect place and so much better than LA, but they're missing the point of why people love it there. It's because you have that sense of community and a feeling like you belong somewhere. Just by walking outside your apartment, you feel connected to others by subway delays and bad weather, your job, etc. for better or for worse. It's almost like you don't need to make an effort to not feel isolated and lonely because the city gives you all the energy and simulation you need just by being there. 
You walk into Washington Square Park in the village and you're immediately stimulated by all the energy and quirkiness of the people there. Since I consider myself mainly an introvert, I actually always believed New York was too much for me. I wanted my peace and solitude and I felt it was too difficult to get. Yet what I didn't really understand, probably until I moved to LA, is that New York is actually the best place for introverts. And the reason being is you don't even need to make social plans to get your social fix for the day. Just walk down the street and be surrounded by what feels like a real urban community and human energy can be enough to fill that loneliness void. In Los Angeles, for comparison, you have to generate all the energy yourself. And I know you can say that for practically any suburban or rural area in America, but we're talking about LA here, the second largest city with a lot of people. So it's what makes this situation unique, I think. Because LA is so gigantic and sprawling and being in, let's say, Santa Monica feels like a completely different city than Silver Lake, it's not easy to get anywhere. And with a lack of effective public transit, you spend so much time in your cars in LA, on freeways, in traffic, finding parking, getting gas, that yes, it's great that you get your own personal seat and privacy, but at what cost? Because it doesn't feel like you're a small fish in a big pond, it just kind of feels like you're nobody, in a place where everyone wants to be somebody. As the capital of car culture, a lot of people use their cars here to shape their identity. You see a lot of really nice cars in LA and SoCal because of that keeping up with the Joneses mentality, or should I say, keeping up with the Kardashians, am I right? LA is the number one American city for having the highest volume of luxury cars. I think I just counted 20 BMWs that passed me within the span of like 10 seconds. And let's be honest, a lot of people can't even afford their luxury cars. That's a different story though. But how else are you supposed to show your identity, I guess, in New York and maybe your fashion and accessories and your quirky, unique personality? In LA, it's your car. And this got me thinking, I don't really miss taking the New York subway so much and dealing with all those delays and, but I do kind of miss people watching on the train and seeing what everyone is up to and reading and even those random people who will bring like a snake on the train and that really energizes you in the morning, I'll tell you that. Sure, in LA you can try to implement something like congestion pricing, but how much backlash is that really gonna cause? And are people really going to now take public transit because they have to pay a little more on the freeways? In 2022, the average LA driver spent over four days in traffic. I'm surprised it's not more. Yet people are still so outraged at the thought of having to take the train instead. And you know what? The problem isn't just car culture. It's also the metro system. Sure, it is operating, but the city is too big for an effective transit system, in my opinion. You can take the train to Studio City, but what happens if your office is another two miles away? Walking in LA is not the same as another dense city. You'll probably end up walking along highways and freeways. LA is not known to be a very walkable city, right? But I do like Culver City, for example, where downtown Culver City kind of gives you that urban feel where you can walk a nice distance and be immersed with different places to go and things to do. But even in downtown Culver City, generally, you you still have to drive there, you still have to find parking, pay for parking, and wait forever in traffic lights because it's still prioritized for cars. It's almost the same vibe as driving to a shopping mall or something. A place where there's lots of stores to go to, but it's still centered around a parking lot. The catch-22 with our loneliness though is that maybe our cars are a huge reason why. Don't get me wrong either, I love the convenience of a car and not having to wait 12 minutes for a delayed train. But what is that doing to us mentally in such a big city. I know physically LA has a lot of public parks, like most cities, but what it doesn't have is the culture of public parks. It doesn't have the spontaneity of just ending up there because you have to drive there. And parks are generally my favorite parts of city, whether it's Hyde Park in London or Central Park in New York or a random park in Chicago I remember going to where there was Wizard of Oz statues everywhere and I just spent the day enamored by them. Parks really mold a city's culture and allow you to escape the hustle and bustle of a big city and ask the person on the bench next to you what they're reading and start up a conversation. And I know what you may be thinking, LA has beaches, but I'm gonna argue it's just different. 
Because you don't typically end up at a beach. You plan to go to the beach, right? Beaches are not unique to Los Angeles. It almost feels like a summer vacation day than it does to explore the uniqueness of somewhere new. Sure, you have Griffith Park, which is five times the size of New York Central Park, but definitely not five times the amount of people. In fact, four times less the amount of visitors each year. And because of these factors, generally, meeting people in LA can be quite a challenge. I actually got inspired to make this video by an email I received from someone who watches my channel and was giving me her thoughts on LA's loneliness problem. Something written that I thought was really interesting was, but a major challenge for myself and other people, I have seen videos on YouTube talking about the same thing, is finding quality friends and connections. I'm I met someone at a social drawing meetup this weekend who said that there is a different way to socialize in New York versus Los Angeles because there are a lot of hangouts where you can meet new people and strike up a conversation. And I do think that's true. As you know, just discussing, you run into a park, you meet someone new, or you run into someone on the street. It's happened to me many times before there where you see a friend on the street or someone you haven't talked to in years and you're like, Oh my god, hey! <laughs> it's not wrong to say it's more difficult than it should be to make friends in LA. A lot of us are adults moving here for a career opportunity or something new. And everyone is so focused on themselves that meeting people can be quite challenging. It's kind of a revolving door of a city. Especially in LA, where if you feel like you didn't make it far enough, you leave. On a positive note, what I do like about this environment is that it forces you out of your comfort zone, essentially. A while back, I went on a hiking group and got to meet new people and new connections. Meetup groups and sports leagues are a great way to meet new people or just cure your loneliness. Either way, it's a win-win. Like, if you're scared, you won't make friends. At least you did something for the day and got to talk to people. There's a ton of meetup groups you can do in LA because it's a place where you can have so many different hobbies even more than New York. If you're more into the outdoors, LA is a great place for it, and so you can find things like hiking groups more easily. You can find a whole list on meetup.com, and it's safe to say whatever your hobbies or interests are, you can find people here that are into those things as well. I mean, even myself, I can do a better job with this. Like, I have a lot of different hobbies here, and one of them being, let's say, YouTube, but I don't really know many other YouTubers. Maybe that's for the better. You know how LA influencers can be. <laughs> I'm only joking. However, even when you do have a circle of friends here, the next hurdle is actually meeting up. We all know the memes and general stereotypes of flaky people in LA canceling their plans at last minute for the dumbest things. But some of it is real. If you have friends that, let's say, live on the east side of LA and you're in the west side, Good luck meeting up. Because of the traffic patterns and mental effort of traveling on these scary roads, sometimes it's just better to stay home. Oh, why did I do this? Why did I do this? And if it's raining like it is today and has been pretty much like all month, good luck keeping those plans. You can't just hop on a subway and meet someone close by. And also a reason why it can be so challenging to meet people, as I was saying before, is because a lot of us here lack the nine to five schedule. With LA being so gig focused, and I'll use one of my friends for example, you know who you are, you can get called at any moment to photograph an event tonight or the next day, making you cancel your plans last minute. It's very common here. So you know what, if you live in LA and you're watching this video, I wanna hear from you too in the comments. How do you feel since you moved? Did you make social connections and friends easily? Was it challenging? How did you do it? Because it's frustrating how this city is so great, but can be so much better. It does, however, again, force you to grow as a person. And it is a shame that so many people prematurely leave because they feel like they just couldn't find their place here. And then they inaccurately accuse LA of being nothing but wannabe influencers and people with no personalities. And that's why you're leaving. So you know what? Instead of making excuses, go out and meet people. Because there's so many interesting people in LA. I mean, how could there not be? It's the second largest city in America. People are moving here from all over, all pursuing different things and creative endeavors and coming from different backgrounds and cultures that it's so inaccurate to accuse everyone of just being a wannabe plastic Kardashian. I wish there was a better way for LA to become more pedestrian friendly with better infrastructure. But I guess if there's not, it's up to you. 
go out and find people. That was a corny way to end the video. Oh wow, the sun's coming out just as I end this video. Let's get outside.